Hey, welcome back, my friend. Great, great to have you. Great uh, to be here, Jonathan. How do you like our new digs? I love it. I Big love change. it. Incredible. I, I, I can't imagine it's the same spot. This is incredible. I mean, yeah, really we wonderful. Yeah, completely stripped everything. And yeah, and Jerusalem. Welcome to Jerusalem. Amazing. Yeah. You know, we, we, <laughs> we were just at a conference together and uh, <laughs> actually at a book table signing yes, books. That's right. And I was thinking back, we've known each other over something like 30 years, close to 30 it's years. Close to th probably 28 years, 1988. That's a long yeah. time. And yeah. our lives have been so parallel. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It's and a I, mystery. That, you know, <laughs> it's one of the mysteries in Jonathan's it's not, it's new not book. It's the book, though. That one's not in the how book. How we both ended up with beautiful Brazilian wives and beautiful Brazilian That's a children. mystery how we it's ended up mystery. with that. <laughs> but uh, I feel such a pride. I know we shouldn't be mm. prideful, but mm. when I, I, I see you, uh, in magazines and mm. on the cover of Charisma and on mm. television so mm. often and The Harbinger and uh, what God's done with you, I just take such pride in it Thank as you. a well, Jewish believer who I feel such a kindred spirit with. Thank you. Well, it's mutual. And I'm, we're not just saying this. It's mutual, Jonathan. I am amazed with what God has done with you and Jewish Voice. It's truly amazing. So it's really cool. We, you know, that the Lord has just taken us, you know, by His grace. The two Jonathans. We should open a <laughs> restaurant together or something. I don't is, know. Is that what it's about? <laughs> <laughs> well, Congratulations on, a, on, a, on a, a new book, The Book of Mysteries. It's mm. so compelling. What Talk about the mysteries. Mm -hmm. It's so intriguing. What mm -hmm. is The Book of Mysteries? The Book of Mysteries is hundreds of mysteries, um, hundreds of them. Um, many of them never before, as far as I know, never before it's spoken of. Mysteries of the end times, mysteries of heaven, mysteries of, of God's name, mysteries of the Hebrew language, mysteries of the holy days, you know, mysteries and keys that can really change your life as well. So it's just it really, there's just as God, there's no end to God, there's no end to this. There's a verse that comes to mind, and I know the, the Holy Spirit speaking to me right now, connecting with the mm. book of mysteries that the Bible talks about without a vision the people perish. Mm -hmm. And that is prophetic revelation. And yes. with the idea then is with prophetic revelation there's life. With prophetic yes. revelation there's revival. Yes. With prophetic revelation comes the blessings of God. And what God is, is using you to do is bring prophetic revelation to His people. Well, yeah, and it, it's supposed to be, it's not only that, you know, it's for our mind, but everything God gives is to touch our lives. We're to apply it. Give us, let's dig in. There's yeah. 365 <laughs> yes. mysteries. Let's dig in to a few mysteries. Yes. We're only going to yeah. touch on a few. One of them is, is called the identical. And here's, here's this. In the time of, of the Bible, on Yom Kippur, when the sacrifice was to be, to be before it could be sacrifices, two goats were presented before the people. And the high priest would stand in the middle and he would present the two goats. And he would, he would have this urn and he would, he would reach into it and take one lot and put it on the head of one goat, one lot on the other goat. One was called Ladonai, that was the goat that would go to the Lord, would be sacrificed. The other was called Lazazel, the scapegoat, would escape. So this was done in front of the people. And, that, and before there could be a sacrifice, it had to be done. Well, Messiah, we know, is our sacrifice. He's our atonement. He's the Yom Kippur. So this had to happen before he was sacrificed. So how did it happen? Before, he was, before the sacrifice of Messiah, he was put before the people, and not two goats, but two men. It was Messiah and it was Barabbas. Messiah is the Son of God, of course. He's the Son of the Father. Then you have Barabbas. Barabbas is a Greek name, but it's really a Hebrew, his, he had a real Hebrew name was Barabba. Barabba means the Son of the oh, Father. Beautiful. The Son of the Father. So they were identical. So we are Barabbas, really, and he, we, he, is, he is Ladonai. He is the scapegoat. He's the, the, the sacrifice. He goes, we go free. We were sinners like Barabbas. We become Barabba. Yes. I never even made the connection of Barabbas yeah. right there. Here's another one along those lines of the temple mysteries. And that is that, that you know, whenever God does something like when, when Joshua came, you had Moses passing the torch. When, when you had Elisha, you had Elijah passing the torch. But what, what you have the biggest change was the new covenant. So where's the passing of the torch? There should be a blessing. There should be something you have that there. Now, the one who represented the old covenant at that time would be the high priest, but he was, he was corrupt at the time. But did God have another person, a mystery priest, representing the old covenant? And he did. And with the world knows him as John the Baptist. He was the priest. In fact, he was the true high priest of Israel. 
You see, he was, he was so much a priest. What did a priest do? A priest cleansed the people. That's what he did. He was cleansing the people. A priest was in charge of the washings. In fact, in the, in the Septuagint, the priest is in charge of what it calls baptisms, the dippings, the cleansing of the people. So what this was all about, we read about this all the time, when Messiah comes to the Jordan, it's the two priests. It's the priest of the new covenant, which is Messiah, and the priest of the old covenant, Beautiful. John. And so they are coming to, it's the, it's the passing of the torch. Before he could minister, this had to happen. It's the old blessing the new. It's the old covenant blessing the new. It's the priesthood of Aaron blessing the priesthood of Messiah, Melchizedek. So, yes. th so even that, I mean, it's so per God is so amazing and so perfect. That, that even that, the blessing that he, we could be saved by the priest of the new covenant. Wow, I, when we come back, we've got to talk about how, I want to know how you get this kind of revelation. Mm -hmm. Also ahead, one of the greatest mysteries of the Bible has to do with giving. God is greatly multiplying your financial support of Jewish voice in miraculous ways. And you are putting your hands across time to touch Messiah and to say, my sins are yours and yours are mine. So he became sin for us that we would become the righteousness of God. Imagine discovering a treasure chest filled with ancient mysteries. Imagine learning the secrets of heaven, secrets that can transform your life. Imagine a devotional that reveals the hidden keys to abundance. The Book of Mysteries by New York Times best-selling author Jonathan Kahn. This book is a treasure chest of information that will bring you joy and blessing. Kahn heard from heaven and wrote The Harbinger, which quickly became an international bestseller. Now he shows you how to hear from heaven like never before. Learn the mystery of the ages Discover hidden keys that will bring you joy, success, blessing, and prosperity. The Book of Mysteries takes you on a life-changing journey of divine revelation. For 365 days, you'll be guided on a deeper and deeper walk with the Holy Spirit. Experience a devotional like no other. Gain spiritual wisdom and insight from one of today's most respected prophetic voices. Order Jonathan Kahn's The Book of Mysteries now. And when you do, We'll sow a special gift into your life. A Rabbi Looks at the Last Days by Jonathan Burnus. Find out why Israel plays such a key role in end times and what signs point to the end. We'll send you both of these life-changing resources when you donate $40 or more to Jewish Voice Ministries. So call now. When you do, you'll be taking an important step toward improving your life and helping our ministry improve the lives of Jewish people worldwide with crucial medical, dental, and eye care. Most importantly, you are helping Jewish communities from Argentina to the Ukraine to Africa learn that their Messiah, Jesus, has come. Remember, God said he will bless those who bless the Jewish people. Your gift of any amount will bless the Jewish people. But when you donate $40 or more, you'll bless the Jewish people and you'll get these two important resources. Call the number on your screen now to partner with Jewish Voice Ministries. You can also click or write with your gift of support by going to our website, jvmi.tv, or writing to us at Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona, 85001. To receive your gifts, please specify offer 1380 when giving $40 or more. Don't wait. Call, click, or write today. New York Times best-selling author Jonathan Kahn is here talking about his new book. It's the Book of Mysteries. Jonathan, how do you get this revelation? How, how does it come to you? Are you, do you just pray and write it down? Or are you writing and it starts to come? How does, how does that happen? I don't know if I fully understand it, you know, but it just, it comes. Sometimes it's a thought that comes in and then I find out that it's true. Like with the harbinger, things would come and then I would find out someone would say something. The thing to lead me, it's, it's like the Lord, I couldn't reproduce it. And yet it's, I'm praying, I'm pondering his word and something just comes. And, and then it, it, it develops like, wow, there is something there. How do we hear the voice of God? Yeah, well, well, first, of course, the Word of God, number one. Number two, 
Number two, we have to be in the will of God, and we have to seek that. The more we can't hear if we're all if we're we're all confused in the will of God. We need to as much as we we know as much as we know God's will. We have to be in that, and then He reveals the will that we don't know. Um, we have to be sensitive. We have to pray. We have to seek. He says, "Seek my face." It's part of it. The first command in the Bible. You think it's love your you know love the Lord. Well, it is, but really the first command is Shema Yisrael is hear, listen. The first, before you can look, you have to listen. You have to be still and you have to listen. We have to take time and unplug ourselves to be plugged into God. Talk about what's yeah. unique about this. This is not your everyday devotional and you've given no. some examples. No, I want no. to go back yeah. into some mysteries. Yeah, but you can, what's unique? And you could read this right through with that as a story or right through for the, for any, in any order, but it also, because it's the journey of the year, the journey, the journey of the teacher through the year, every, you, you get taken on the journey so it can be a devotional as well. Yeah, here's another, we were talking about the streams, one of the streams of the sacrifice. So there's so much, this is just one, but here's, here's another, Jonathan. You, you know the mystery of the Shemitah, of course. This is the mystery of the Shmicha. Okay, now let me tell you what that is. Here it is. Before the sacrifice could be offered, the priests of Israel had to perform something called the shmicha. They would lay their hands on top of the head of the sacrifice, and they would I, become one with that sacrifice. It could only die for their sins if they identify with it. In a sense, it's a transference, and they would confess their sins over the sacrifice. Did this happen when our Messiah is the offering? So what happened? It happened. The priest had to do it. Now, the, the very fact that we, you know, we have we, the priest were, or the Sanhedrin was plotting, it was biblical. It was a mystery. The priest have to offer up the sacrifice. That's why he was delivered to the priest because he's the sacrifice. But not only that. As soon as they pronounce judgment, it says in the it says in the account that they all struck him in his head, his face. Mm. That priest's hand have to touch the head of the sacrifice. And in, the Greek literally says that they put their palms on his head. Their palms, and not only that, that's the smicha, and not only that, but there's the confession of the sin. So did that happen? Yes. Here's the thing. They confess the sin. I mean, the sacrifice is innocent of the sin. It's their own sin. What did they do? They pronounced, they called him, they pronounced the sin of blasphemy over him. That wasn't his sin, it was their sin. When we all have performed the smicha, because when you get saved, the, old, the, sin, the, the sinner's prayer, that's the smicha. You are, you are saying you died for my sins. You are identifying with him. You identified with me, Messiah. And you are putting your hands across time to touch Messiah and to say, my sins are yours and yours are mine. So he became sin for us that we would become the righteousness of God. Uh, give us, yes. Give us a taste of the mystery, mystery of pluralities. Plurality. Yeah, that's yeah. Now this I is love a whole other, a whole other, another train in here. It's this: there are some words, only a, there's a few set words in the Hebrew language, which you cannot say singular. You always must say them plural, and it, they're all mysterious. One of them is the word for life, chayim. That's not life. You can't say life in Hebrew in the Bible. It's life's plural. Why? You know, we think of we think of life as you know. There's life, temporary, and then death is forever. It's the opposite. It, death in Hebrew is singular. It's an end. It's finite. There's an end to death. God ends death, but life is forever, eternal life. Life goes on forever. But not only that. In order to know life, you have to know Hayim, meaning that in order to come to life, you have to come to lives. Everyone who's saved who knows life knows two lives. And actually, the word. The, the old life, and then you must be born again. Now we say, here's another mystery. You know, we talk about the mercy of God. In the original language of Hebrew, God has no mercy. And let me tell you what that means. He has no mercy because in Hebrew he has rachamim. Rachamim is not mercy, it's mercies. Just as one more moment. <laughs> I love it, by the way. I, I want you to, I want to, one more before we break. The gathering of the eighth day. The mystery oh, that's a of the whole, game. that's a whole big thing. I mean, can we, can we wait to come back? Should we save that I one? I think we should. Because, okay, we'll save that Someone, one. Yeah. We'll save if that you have to, one. You want to go back. Why does Israel play such a key role in the end times? Jonathan Kahn will be back in a moment to answer that question. Imagine discovering a treasure chest filled with ancient mysteries. Imagine learning the secrets of heaven, secrets that can transform your life. Imagine a devotional that reveals the hidden keys to abundance. The Book of Mysteries by New York Times bestselling author Jonathan Kahn. 
This book is a treasure chest of information that will bring you joy and blessing. Khan heard from heaven and wrote The Harbinger, which quickly became an international bestseller. Now he shows you how to hear from heaven like never before. Learn the mystery of the ages. Discover hidden keys that will bring you joy, success, blessing, and prosperity. The Book of Mysteries takes you on a life-changing journey of divine revelation. For 365 days, you'll be guided on a deeper and deeper walk with the Holy Spirit. Experience a devotional like no other. Gain spiritual wisdom and insight from one of today's most respected prophetic voices. Order Jonathan Kahn's The Book of Mysteries now. And when you do, we'll sow a special gift into your life. A Rabbi Looks at the Last Days by Jonathan Burnus. Find out why Israel plays such a key role in end times and what signs point to the end. We'll send you both of these life-changing resources when you donate $40 or more to Jewish Voice Ministries. So call now. When you do, you'll be taking an important step toward improving your life and helping our ministry improve the lives of Jewish people worldwide with crucial medical, dental, and eye care. Most importantly, you are helping Jewish communities from Argentina to the Ukraine to Africa learn that their Messiah, Jesus, has come. Remember, God said he will bless those who bless the Jewish people. Your gift of any amount will bless the Jewish people. But when you donate $40 or more, you'll bless the Jewish people and you'll get these two important resources. Call the number on your screen now to partner with Jewish Voice Ministries. You can also click or write with your gift of support by going to our website, jvmi.tv, or writing to us at Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona, 85001. To receive your gifts, please specify offer 1380 when giving $40 or more. Don't wait. Call, click, or write today. The Bible's filled with stories of supernatural expansion when we surrender what we have to God. That divine principle still works today. Your financial support is changing countless Jewish communities in need. When you give, they receive hope and healing. They're not the only ones blessed by partnering with this ministry. Our outreach partners are our most important asset as a ministry. We couldn't do what Jewish Voice is called to do without them, and we don't want to do it without them because it's invigorating, it's energizing for me and for our staff team to see dozens, if not hundreds of people a year join with us and say, I believe in what the Lord's doing with his people Israel, and I want to be a part of it. If you've never done this before, you think you're going to be giving of yourself to all these other people, but when you get back home, you realize very quickly that you've gotten so much more in return. And that's one reason I keep coming back. Even if you have no intention of missions work, do it one time. Do it one time. And if you don't get hooked, I'll be surprised. I don't know if I'm leaving home or if I'm going home when I leave here. I see people that have nothing and have a happiness like I, I never see in the United States. I had to go help other people in the world and that it was no longer about me and I needed to start working backwards in my life and I started finding true happiness. This is where my happiness lies. It's amazing to see people who step forward and serve sacrificially, time, money, skills, talents, time away from their work, using their vacation time for the whole year to come with us because they really believe, according to God's promise to Abraham in Genesis, that I will bless those who bless you. If you're a medical professional and you live in the United States, you have so much to give, regardless as to what area of expertise you're in. You can come and help people and really make a difference. But not only that, it gives you that perspective that you gain on life in general. And when you go back to the United States, then you look at life so different. And it makes one so much more appreciative of what we have. 
they ask me, why do I keep coming back? And I, I tell them because when I go home, there's advertising and sales that runs America. And it's more bells and whistles every year. There's never enough. You're never satisfied. Here, I can't be more satisfied. It's, it's just a feeling that you know you've done something eternal and that can't be taken away and it can't be better. The volunteers that you just saw are able to accomplish incredible things all because of your financial support. When you partner with this ministry, you help us provide vital medical care, dental care, eye care to Jewish communities around the world, but most importantly, you help us share the gospel with them when you donate to Jewish Voice. You don't just get great products that can change your life, you change the lives of Jewish communities worldwide. There's so much more to do, and we need your help now. Join Jewish Voice Ministries as we tour the Holy Land and celebrate Israel 2017. It's time to honor the 50-year anniversaries of Jewish Voice and the liberation of Jerusalem. On this trip, you'll stay in five-star accommodations as we tour Mount Carmel, Nazareth, Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives, Upper Room, and more. You'll see Jonathan Burnus commemorate the recapture of Jerusalem right where it happened. We'll also visit an Israeli military base and enjoy a Bedouin meal. You can renew your marriage vows on the Sea of Galilee and participate in an immersion ceremony at the Jordan River. As an added bonus, you can even visit Eilat, the Red Sea, and world-famous Petra. Act now before this once-in-a-lifetime event sells out. Call and speak with our events coordinator to learn more exciting details about Celebrate Israel 2017 or visit jvmi.org slash Israel. Jonathan Kahn is our guest today, and he'll be right back after I answer a few questions from our viewers. It's time now for Ask the Rabbi. We get some very interesting questions from our viewers every week on topics ranging from Jewish customs to the last days. So now it's your turn to ask the rabbi. Our first question comes from Alice in Lakeland, Florida. Are modern Messianic Jews and Christians obliged to keep the Sabbath? Alice, that's a good question and not so easy to answer. First of all, I want to establish that we're saved by grace through faith. The atoning work of Yeshua, of Jesus the Messiah, brings us salvation. Now, having said that, the Sabbath is one of the Ten Commandments, and as as followers of the Lord, I believe we're to keep the commandments of the Lord, understanding that this is for our own benefit. So I believe in the Sabbath. I'm a Sabbath keeper. I believe it's the, it's the seventh day. The, what the scripture says is that you take a day to rest, but this is between you and God. So I don't like the word obliged, but, uh, but I'm saved by grace. And so I want to walk with God and I want to follow his commandments and I believe a Sabbath is one of those commandments. Betty in Tulsa, Oklahoma is asking, did Yeshua fulfill all the promises and prophecies about the Messiah in the Hebrew scriptures? The answer is yes and no, which is a great Jewish answer, by the way. He came and fulfilled the prophecies that, that were connected to the atonement for sin, sin what the rabbis called the suffering servant, that the uh, prophecies concerning the one who would come and lay down his life for us, but there's prophecies yet to be fulfilled, and he will fulfill them. In one sense, they've, he's already fulfilled them because God is outside the realm of time, but the prophecies of Messiah uh, run a spectrum uh, that began with his first coming and conclude with his return when he comes back as the lion of the tribe of Judah and brings true peace into the world uh, and we have the messianic age or the millennial kingdom. He established peace in our hearts in his first coming. He died for our sins as the lamb. He returns as the lion to fulfill everything and bring completion to all of the mess messianic prophecies of the scriptures. Well, that's uh, all the questions we have time for. You can submit your questions to jvmi.tv and follow the link and who knows, we may pick your question for an upcoming show.
Jonathan Kahn has been our guest today. And Jonathan, a final thought, the eight, the mystery of the eighth day. Well, it's about what happens after the end. It's about, you know, you have the numbers, but then eight is beyond the numbers. It's, it's infinity. It's about the mystery of eternity. When you go to Revelation, you, go to the, you see all these things about seven, seven trumpets, seven, seven, seven. Then at the very end, no more sevens, you're in the eighth day. What is the eighth day? It's the day of eternity. I really encourage you to get the book, The Book of Mysteries. I think you'll see it is life changing. Well, next week we've got an amazing program for you. Here's a sneak preview. Danny, help us understand how Hebrew, the spoken Hebrew, is a restoration of a language. Because it was dormant for many years and it was thought to be dead. And that was not the plan of God. It came back to life first to Israel and next to the rest of the world. We're out of time, but before I go, I want to pray a special Hebrew blessing over you. It's called the Aaronic Benediction, and I just want you to receive it. This is God's blessing over your life. Yivarech Adonai v'yish marecha, ya'er Adonai panave lecha v'ichonecha, yisa Adonai panave lecha v'sem lecha shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you.